Hello, my name is Jawad Hadjahia. I will present our work, C-Scale, Exploiting Multi-Domain Dynamic Voltage and Frequency Scaling for Energy Efficient Mobile Processors. First, I will give a high-level overview of the talk. A modern thermally constrained mobile SOC has three domains, compute, I.O., and memory. The SOC allocates a fixed power budget to these domains unfairly, based on their worst-case performance demand even if they are underutilized. Our goal is to increase the energy efficiency and performance of mobile SOC by dynamically orchestrating the distribution of the SOC power budget across the three domains based on their actual performance demand. To this end, we propose C-Scale, a new multi-domain power management technique that introduces three mechanisms. First, a new DVFS mechanism to distribute the SOC power budget to each domain based on its predicted performance demand. Secondly, an accurate algorithm to predict each domain's performance demand. And finally, domain-specific techniques to optimize the energy efficiency of each domain at different operating points. We implement C-Scale on the Intel Skylake SOC for mobile devices. C-Scale improves, improves the performance of specs CP2006 and 3D Mark workloads by up to 16% and 8.9%, while providing larger benefits at lower power budgets. C-Scale reduces the average power consumption of battery life workloads by up to 10.7%. Here is the outline of the talk today. I will begin with a brief overview on mobile SOC. There are three domains in modern thermally constrained mobile SOC compute domain, memory domain, and I.O. domain. Several voltage sources exist, and some of them are shared between domains. For example, VDDQ, VIO, VSA, VCore, and VGraphics. Many components in the SOC normally have their own clock. For example, I.O. controllers and engines, IO interconnect memory controller and DVRIO typically each has an independent clock. Compute domains support dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, while IO and memory domains have fixed clock frequencies and voltage. I will now discuss the motivation and the goal of our work. To motivate our work, we evaluate the potential benefit of employing DVFS across the three domains. We carry out an experiment on the Intel Broadway processor under two setups, a baseline setup and the multi-domain DVFS setup, MDDVFS in short. In MDDVFS, we reduce the frequency of DRAM and the IO interconnect. We also reduce the shared voltage and VDRIO digital voltage. We use multiple workloads from spec CPU 2006 and 3D Mark and a workload that exercises the peak bandwidth of memory. We make four observations from our motivational experiment. I will describe them one by one. Our first observation is about the importance of SOC multi-domain scaling. We observe that the SOC power budget management algorithm assigns a fixed power budget to the I/O and the memory domain. The power budget corresponds to the worst case performance demand. When running three spec CPU 2006 workloads using baseline and MDDVFS setups, we observe that the power of the three workloads is reduced by 10%. The energy of the first workload was reduced by 10%, while for the other workloads, it was decreased slightly or increased. The performance of the first workload was slightly degraded, while the other workloads experienced more than 10% performance degradation. Moreover, the EDP of the first workload was improved by about 10%, while the other workloads experienced significant degradation in EDP. The effect of energy efficiency varies widely across workloads. Close look into the bandwidth demand of the three workloads shows that the workloads have different memory bandwidth demands. Close look into the latency demands reveals that the second workload is highly bottlenecked by memory latency. 
We conclude that the DBFS in the IO and the memory can reduce power and energy with minimal performance impact for workloads that are not bottlenecked by memory. Our second observation is about the importance of power budget redistribution across domains. PPM employs power budget redistribution mechanism between components within a domain, for example, between cores and the graphics engine within a compute domain. Current PPMs do not support dynamic power distribution across different domains. We evaluate the impact of increasing CPU cores frequency of the MDDBFS setup from 1.2 to 1.3 GHz when utilizing the redistributed power budget. We can see that the, compared to the baseline without MDDBFS, the performance of the first workload was improved by 8% and the performance of the second workload and the third workload was degraded by 5 and 10%. We conclude that applying DBFS in the IO and the memory domains and redistributing the same power budget between domains can improve performance in compute-bound workloads. Our third observation is about the memory bandwidth demand in mobile SOC. Multiple components in the IO and the compute domain have widely varying main memory bandwidth demand across different workloads. For example, memory bandwidth demand for spec CPT 2006 and 3D Mark workloads over time looks like this. Several intervals have low bandwidth demand, for example, below 5 gigabyte per second. In addition, memory bandwidth demand for different SOC engines looks like this. Several SOC engines have low bandwidth demand, for example, below 5 gigabyte per second under some configurations and workloads. We conclude that typical workloads have modest memory demands, yet the SOC IO and the memory domains are provisioned high. This makes existing mobile SOCs inefficient for typical workloads. Our fourth and final observation is about the importance of optimizing VRAM configuration. DRAM reference code training is part of the BIOS code that manages system memory initialization. The purpose of MRC training is to detect DIMMs and their capabilities and to configure the configuration registers for the memory controller, DDRIO, and DIMMs. Compared to using optimized MRC values for a given frequency, unoptimized MRC values can greatly degrade the average power by 22% and the performance by 10%. Both results were measured on Broadwell system when using a workload that exercises big bandwidth demand. We conclude that optimizing the DRAM configuration for each frequency is very important for multi-domain DDFS energy efficiency. Based on our four key observations, we conclude that a holistic power management approach is needed to mitigate the power management inefficiencies in the current mobile SOCs. Our goal is to provide such an efficient multi-domain power management approach by dynamically orchestrating the distribution of the SOC power budget across the three domains based on their actual performance demand. Now I will explain the technique to achieve our goal. We propose C-Scale. C-Scale is a new multi-domain power management technique to improve the energy efficiency of mobile SOCs. This scale is based on three key ideas. First, a new DVFS mechanism to distribute the SOC power to each domain based on its predicted performance demand. Secondly, an accurate algorithm to predict each domain's performance demand. And finally, domain-specific techniques to optimize energy efficiency of each domain at different operating points. This scale architecture has three key components. The first component is a power management flow that is responsible for DDFS process and reconfiguring the DRAM with optimized MRC values. The second component is a demand prediction mechanism that predicts the performance demand from each SOC domain. And the final component is a holistic power management algorithm that is responsible for DDFS of the system domains to meet the system's the dynamic performance demand and redistributing the power budget across domains. I will explain each of the three C-scale components. 
The first component in the C-scale power management flow, which is responsible for adjusting the frequencies and voltage of the IO interconnect and the memory subsystem. Let me go through the steps of the flow. First, a demand prediction mechanism, which is evaluated every 30 milliseconds, decides on the target operating point. Secondly, we adjust the voltage depending on the VPFH direction. Next step is a block and drain of the IO and the memory domains. Fourth, we place the DRAM into self-refresh mode. Then we load the optimized MRC values for the new operating point. Next, we adjust the clock frequencies. And finally, we resume the SOC operation. The second component is a demand prediction mechanism. Demand prediction mechanism predicts the performance demand using peripheral configuration registers and performance counters. Peripheral configuration registers indicate the active devices and their configuration. For example, the number of active displays and cameras and frame rates. We use four performance counters with thresholds corresponding to each counter. Performance counters indicates the bandwidth and latency demands of CPU cores, graphics engines, and IoE devices. The last component is a holistic power management algorithm. C-Scale implements power distribution algorithm in the power management unit firmware. The system moves the I.O. and the memory domains to a high or low performance operating point based on the decision of the demand prediction mechanism. The system redistributes the power budget across the SOC domains when changing the operating point. For example, when the SOC moves to a low performance operating point, the PMU reduces the power budget for the IO and the memory domains, and it increases the power budget for the compute domain. I will next present our evaluation of C-scale. First, I will present our methodology. We implement C-scale on a real Intel Skylake system. For our baseline measurements, we disable C-scale. We use SOC with 4.5 watt thermal design power. We use National Instrument Data Acquisition Device for power measurements. We evaluate C-scale with three classes of workloads. For CPU, we use spec CPU 2006 benchmarks. For graphics, we use 3D Mark benchmarks. For battery life, we use web browsing, live gaming, video conferencing, and video playback benchmarks. We compare C-Scale to two most relevant prior works, MIM-Scale and CoreScale. Basically, MIM-Scale applies DDFS only for memory subsystem, while CoreScale coordinates CPU cores and memory subsystem DDFS. Let me start with showing the results for CPU workloads. C-scale improved free system performance by 9.2% on average. C-scale provides 5.4 and 2.4 times the performance improvement of MIM-scale and CoreScale. This is because C-scale is holistic, taking into account all SOC domains. And unlike other book mechanisms, C-scale optimizes the DRAM interface. Performance benefits of C-scale correlates to the performance scalability of the running workload with CPU frequency. We conclude that C-Scale significantly improves CPU core performance by holistically applying DDFS to SOC domains and redistributing power budget. Now let's see the results for the graphics workloads. C-Scale improved real system performance between 6.7 and 8.9% because C-Scale boosts the graphics engine frequency by redistributing the power budget across the, the three domains. C-Scale provides approximately five times the performance improvement of MIM-Scale and CoreScale. MIM-Scale and CoreScale have similar performance improvements because their average power 
savings are identical. This is because in graphics workloads, CPU cores run at the lowest possible frequency. Therefore, cost scale cannot further scale down the CPU frequency. We conclude that C scale significantly improved the graphics performance using the saved power budget from the IO and the memory domains. Now I am presenting the results for the battery life workloads. Battery life workloads normally have fixed performance requirement. C scale reduces the average power between 6.4 and 10.7 percent on a real system and workloads. C-scale provides approximately five times the, the power reduction of MEM-scale and CoScale. MEM-scale and CoScale have similar average power reduction. This is because in battery life workloads, CPU cores run at the lowest possible frequency. Therefore, CoScale cannot force her scale down the CPU frequency. We conclude that C-scale significantly reduces the SOC average power consumption. We have more results in the paper. For example, C-scale performance and average power consumption sensitivity to system TDP. C-scale's performance benefit increases as TDP decreases. And C-scale improves energy consumption across the entire TDP range. We also have results for different DRAM frequencies and types. Let me quickly conclude my talk. This can be the first work to enable coordination and high efficiency DFS across all SOC domains to increase energy efficiency. This can optimize and effectively redistribute the total power budget across all SOC domains based on the performance demand of each domain. We implement this scale on the Intel Skylake SOC for mobile devices. This scale improves the performance of CPU and graphics for clouds by up to 16% and 8.9% respectively for 4.5 watt thermal design power SOC. This scale reduces the average power consumption of battery life power clouds by up to 10.7% across all TTPs of the Intel Skylake system. We conclude that this scale is an effective approach to balance power consumption and performance demand across all SOC domains. Thanks for your attention. For more details, I invite you to read our ISCA 2020 paper.